Last week, just as I was contemplating creating this new channel, I was out walking on the street heading to school to pick up my son. I saw an elderly gentleman up ahead on one of those mobility scooters. He seemed to be backing out from a steep driveway. Then I realised he wasn't backing out, he had lost control and was rolling out onto the road. Luckily for him, he was just near a school zone which limits traffic to 40 km per hour. All the cars saw him and were easily able to give him a wide berth. I was still quite a distance away but I saw that he had managed to steer the scooter back towards the curb, which stopped him from rolling down the street. As I got closer, I saw that he was turning the key trying to start the scooter. As no one else was stopping, I decided to go up and ask him if everything was okay. He told me that the battery had conked out while he was trying to go up the driveway. It didn't seem to be starting, so I asked him if I could call anybody to help. But he said, no, no, it's okay, it'll start soon, it sometimes does this. Because he was still on the road and cars had to go around him, I offered to push him back up onto the footpath. He was quite happy with that, so I got into position at the back of the scooter. Luckily, there was another man walking along the footpath who offered to help me, so together we were able to push him back up onto the footpath. The scooter started back up again and he went on his way, thankful that we had helped. The point of the story is that it's pretty simple to help out. I was in a little bit of a rush, but it only took about two minutes to help him out and get him on his way. Another helping hand story, I used to live in Beijing between 2008-2009, and I remember during my first week in the country, I was riding my bike to work. There was a really busy street that I had to cross every morning to get to my school. Often cars wouldn't stop for me or would beep their horns even when I was crossing at the pedestrian crossing. One morning, to my horror, I could see there was a boy lying in the gutter on the other side of the street. His bike had been smashed and pieces of it were strewn across the middle of the road. All the cars continued on driving as if nothing had happened and just avoided the broken bicycle. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, so I raced across the road as quickly as I could, stopping traffic as I went. Cars were beeping at me and basically telling me to get off the road. I went over to the boy and in fairly broken Chinese asked him, Ni me shi ma? Basically, is everything okay? Luckily, he was conscious and replied to me, but I couldn't understand him. My Chinese was simply not good enough at the time. I had a phone on me, so I offered for him to use it. He seemed to have a bit of a smile on his face that a foreigner was being so kind to him. Just at that point, a number of cars started stopping and their occupants leapt out. There were at least 10 people there willing to help the boy out. They called for an ambulance, lifted him up onto the footpath, and stayed with him to make sure he was okay. The people pretty much ignored me, but that's okay, at least they were there helping the boy. I realised then that nobody was going to help out initially. I guess they were afraid to be the first ones to help. Although I wasn't able to call an ambulance, by me simply showing that I was there to help, spurred on others to do the same. Later that evening, I told my wife, then girlfriend, about the incident and she wasn't surprised. She said that recently in China there had been a spate of fake accidents trying to lure good Samaritans in and either rob them, cheat them, or sometimes even sue them. I couldn't believe it at first, but then after having lived in China for six or so months, I realised it was a very real problem. It didn't matter either way, I was never going to leave an injured boy lying in the street gutter just because of a few bad stories going around. My father-in-law soon got a bit frustrated with me because I was always helping strangers out. He knew I had good intentions, but he didn't want me to get caught up in some elaborate scam. Another story from China, I was walking home one afternoon with my wife and we saw a gathering of people up ahead. There were about 100 or more people gathered around in a circle. I wanted to see what was going on, so I headed over for a quick look. There was a lady who was sitting upright next to a jidan bing stand, basically a cart selling pancake style egg wraps. Her head was bleeding profusely and there was a man standing next to her with a bamboo stick with blood on it. I could only assume that he had beaten her over the head with it. Soon after, a group of around four other men stormed in and started attacking the man with the stick. A few moments later, another team of men charged in and started attacking those men. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Basically a full-on brawl ensued seemingly over jidan bing. I asked my wife what was going on, and she basically said that it was a territory dispute. One of the Jidan Bing sellers had strayed too closely into the other seller's territory. Of course, none of it was official. It was all just unwritten street rules, I guess. Anyway, they were mainly fighting with fists and kicks, but then I saw a man pull out a heavy stick and start smashing another guy in the head with it. One of the guys fell to the ground in front of me, and then two others pounced on him, stomping him and kicking him while he lay helpless on the concrete. My first instinct was to grab one of the attackers from behind and throw him to the floor. At that point, almost immediately, a number of the onlookers came to my assistance. Within a matter of moments, the crowd had subdued all the attackers and we were able to wait for the police to arrive. It was complete bedlam. A couple of the Chinese onlookers came up to me afterwards and said they felt embarrassed. They felt embarrassed that only the foreigner wanted to help. But then I told them, in the end, everyone helped out, didn't they? My wife wasn't too pleased with me, understandably. She said that I did something too dangerous and that I could have been hurt. 
I agreed, but I couldn't morally justify just standing there while a guy was lying on the concrete being stomped on. Actually, just a couple of days before, I had bought myself a set of army fatigues which I happened to be wearing that very day. Probably some of the onlookers thought I was a military man, which of course I wasn't. It was purely a fashion statement. Although prior to coming to China, I had recently just quit the Queensland Police, so I guess I felt fairly confident with handling myself in a scuffle. I told my Chinese friends the story and they all said I was a bit silly to do that. They were indicating that it could have gone bad and the attackers might have started attacking me. I somewhat agreed, but I couldn't control myself at the time. I had to help. The point of all these stories is that often people need help, but onlookers are often embarrassed slash scared to help. But from my experiences, most people want to help, but just need the motivation to do so. Often all it takes is one person to start proceedings and then others will eagerly join in. I wouldn't call myself a hero, just a guy who wants to help out. Clearly there's a psychological reason for people not wanting to help. It's called the bystander effect. Basically, if you're the victim, you're better off if one person rather than a crowd is watching your distress. But it's also been shown that if one person breaks the norm and helps out, it breaks the power of the group to ignore a victim's pleas. Studies of school children have shown that if a single child stands up and defends a bullied child, the victimized child is much less likely to be bullied. Of course, we could always worry about the negative consequences of helping, as seen in my Chinese examples, but the alternative is to spend the rest of your life wondering whether your actions might have actually saved someone or not. If you make the effort in your life to help people in need, this will certainly encourage others to do the same. Ultimately, this will make society a better place for all of us.